Bunbury, Episode 6, Murder in High Places, by Helena Marchmont. Narrated by Nathaniel Parker. Hear no evil, speak no evil, and you won't be invited to cocktail parties. Oscar Wilde. Chapter One Pride and Prejudice in the Cotswolds. Alfie McAllister, the petite white haired lady stared at him through her oversized glasses. You mean to say you've never visited David Savile in his mansion? I thought you two were friends. Well, we are. He just prefers meeting up in Bunbury. He's very fond of our cream teas. Marge Redwood changed her expression from surprise to disapproval. Judging by his waistline, he's very fond of anyone's cream teas. Come now, protested Liz. Not everybody is blessed with your metabolism, and I think the cuddly look suits him. Just as well, given the amount of your fudge he's just ordered. And we have Alfie to thank for that, said Liz. Alfie, dear, it was very good of you to recommend us to him. It's given such a boost to the business. He serves it at all his dinner parties. And now all his posh acquaintances are ordering it as well, interrupted Marge, easing herself off the rocking chair and going to the lace-covered table to retrieve the teapot. You wouldn't believe the mileage I'm putting in, delivering it all over the place. Top up, Alfie. Thanks. He held out the china cup decorated with roses. It always felt very genteel to take tea with Liz and Marge. I'm sorry if I've given you a lot of extra bother. Pay no attention to Margaret, said Liz, bringing over the milk jug and adding a splash to his tea. She's never happier than when she's complaining. I love making the fudge and my business manager here is really quite thrilled with how well we're doing. You should see the way her little face lights up when she does the accounts these days. I scarcely have time to do all the accounts with all the driving, Marge muttered. We could always send it via the Royal Mail said Liz. We're a local business, and it always pays to have the personal touch, said Marge, and you adore the driving. Marge had the grace to look slightly contrite. I do, she admitted. Alfie, that car you bought me runs like a dream. It was so generous of you. I wouldn't have got more than a tenner from the insurance for my old one. He brushed away her thanks. A pleasure. I'm glad you like it. Despite the increased success of the ladies' fudge business, he suspected they didn't have overmuch disposable income. Marge had already moved in with Liz so that they didn't have the expense of two separate homes and could share costs. Alfie had grown up in a single-parent household in London's East End and knew all about being short of cash. He still couldn't quite believe he was now a multimillionaire following the sale of his start-up. And he had had the harshest of lessons that money didn't buy happiness. But now, a year after Vivian's death, he realised he was having more good days than bad. And the ladies had played a key part in that. I'm amazed you still haven't seen David Savile's mansion, Marge returned to her theme. I would have thought you would have insisted, now that it's a local celebrity. His house is a local celebrity? asked Alfie, bemused. It's on all the posters for the film. Alfie turned to Liz in the hope of getting some sensible information film? The new Pride and Prejudice, Liz explained, the one that came out last year and is supposed to be the best version ever. It is, Marge asserted. I always thought nothing could be better than the BBC version with Colin Firth as Mr Darcy. Remember that moment when he appeared in the wet shirt? But seeing Dorian Stevens with no shirt at all. <laughs> she gave a lingering sigh. Really, Marge, said Liz. You don't want people to think you're one of those leopard ladies, you know, the one who chase after young men. Marge rolled her eyes despairingly. Clarissa, I've told you time and time again, the word is cougar. You really need to get your big cat sorted out. And Dorian stripping off was integral to the plot. Really, dear? I must have missed the bit where Jane Austen mentions that. 
Marge ignored this. Anyway, she said, turning to Alfie. It was all filmed at David Savile's place, and the poster showed Dorian and that actress who played Elizabeth Bennet. You know the one, with the mansion behind them. Now do you remember? Alfie shook his head. Nope, I don't think I've seen it. Come on, you must have. Everyone's seen it. It came out last year, for heaven's sake. Have you been living on the moon? Alfie saw Liz shoot a warning look at Marge. She was bulkier than her friend and older, and generally appeared benignly vague. But Alfie had quickly realised that Liz was very sharp indeed. And he knew that she had worked out that the film must have reached the cinemas around the same time Vivian died, when Alfie was incapable of noticing anything around him. The Savile Country House really is very interesting, Alfie, she said. Built at the end of the 17th century. And still going today, interrupted Marge, whereas anything built in the 60s and 70s is falling about our ears. English Baroque, Liz continued, ignoring her. Such a beautiful facade, with marvellous ionic columns and wonderful gardens designed by Capability Brown. It's definitely well worth seeing. And as a friend of David Savile's, you wouldn't have to pay an entrance fee or queue up for hours to get in, said Marge. He gets coach loads of sightseers now. Of course, the public only see a small part of the main house, Liz said. David Savile's wife has turned the old stables into a restaurant and gift shop, and there's a little museum in another of the outbuildings. She's done a brilliant job of organising everything. Mainly because David Savile couldn't organise his way out of a paper bag, said Marge. Alfie laughed. He liked David a lot, but had never seen much sign of organisational skills. He reckoned David's privileged background had let him breeze through life without effort. Is his wife a posh party planner? he asked. Not posh at all, said Marge. I think his family were horrified when he decided to marry her. They probably had their eye on minor European royalty at the very least, but she's exactly what the place needed. She mucks in with whatever needs to be done, she makes sure the staff are paid properly, and she hires locally when they need extra help. Did she work before they were married? asked Alfie. A serving wench, a dairy maid, a pole dancer. A nurse, said Liz. She looked after him while he was in hospital with meningitis. Poor man nearly died. Apparently, David hadn't had the charmed life Alfie imagined. I wouldn't be surprised to find it was her idea to remake Pride and Prejudice, said Marge. She probably rang up the film company, and then I bet David Savile insisted that they cast Dorian Stevens as Darcy. They both went to Eton, you know. As had Alfie's best friend Oscar, who had been in the same year as David Savile, and another Old Etonian was David Savile's cousin. Charlie Teflon Tennyson. But Alfie didn't want to think about him. Oscar thinks Dorian Stevens is one of the finest actors of our generation, he said. Seeing without his shirt, I would definitely agree, said Marge. Although he's a bit of a bad boy, he had an affair while he was filming here. Oh, come now, dear. You don't know that, said Liz. I do, said Marge. Dorothy heard it from the mother of a girl who did some waitressing at one of the Savile's fancy dinners and overheard the regular staff gossiping about how one of the chambermaids had actually caught Dorian and his lady friend at it. Gossiping is the operative word, said Liz, and you should know better than to repeat it. He still comes back to visit David Savile. That tells you something. It tells you that he's friends with David Savile, unless you're suggesting that's who he's having the affair with. Alfie decided it was time to change the subject. I've met the Savile's daughter, Phoebe. She was a student at Oxford. Yes, dear, we remember, said Liz equably. You met her in the middle of a murder investigation. She seems a nice enough girl from what I hear, said Marge, which Alfie recognised as high praise. No airs or graces, and her mother makes her work on the estate during the holidays. She suddenly lurched forward in her rocking chair, almost spilling her tea. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Alfie, you're free now, aren't you? Uh, clear until this evening's rehearsal of Agatha's Amateurs. What can I do for you? Marge was beaming now. You can make a delivery of fudge for me, to David Savile. A short time later, Alfie was speeding along in the 1950s Cotswold Blue Jaguar. He now knew why Aunt Augusta had bequeathed him her cottage and car, but he wasn't going to let that stop him enjoying driving the jag. The late autumn day was gloriously crisp and clear. There had been enough rain over the summer to ensure that the rolling hills were still green, but the leaves had turned gold and russet. Oscar would think Alfie entirely mad for enjoying such a day. He refused to come anywhere near the countryside, dismissing it as pub grub.